I believe in long, stable marriages uh, in the heterosexual world because I think they're good. I, I believe that we can do just the same in our own life, in gay life. I, Henry. I, Henry. Take thee, Stephen. Take thee, Stephen. To my wedded husband. To my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love, cherish, and to obey. To love, cherish, and to obey. Till death us do part. Power. Gay people, when they have to look for a pattern for their relationships, can either look at marriage and say, right, this is what we want to copy, this is the sort of relationship we want to have. Um, but it's not necessarily the only pattern for relationships. Homosexuals, in a sense, have a head start in uh, developing new models of sexual relationships just because they can't automatically accept marriage as an ideal for them. For heterosexuals, marriage, a sexually exclusive relationship between two people, is the norm. For gays, relationships are in many ways much more difficult to work out. There is no social norm for gay relationships, and so gays have had to develop their own alternatives. Tonight we'll be looking at some of these and seeing how successful they are. We'll also be asking whether they provide patterns for heterosexuals too. Many gay men don't have long-term relationships at all. It's very important for a lot of people to have casual sex. Uh, it's it's just about the only way you can actually get to know people. It, it, you go to clubs and uh, you meet people. You can go for months on this, the club and the disco scene and you don't meet anybody at all. And you begin to think, well, what's wrong with me? Because in the beginning of the evening, you leave home feeling quite good. You've, you've spent quite a lot of time getting ready to go out, sort of, physically and mentally and you 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 get you go out you spend three four hours on the scene and you go home alone well okay if it happens once or twice fine but if if it happens for months on end then you it really does something for you you begin to question you know what what is wrong with me am i ugly uh, you know i just don't understand why people are not making relationships with me and and the longer this goes on for the more uh, likely you are to lose your self-confidence. I think one of the reasons that lots of gay men are so disillusioned with the, the gay scene is because all the time they're seeking um, the model of a heterosexual relationship. They're looking for a long-term partner who has to satisfy all their needs, has to be sexually, emotionally, intellectually, work-wise compatible. And I don't think anyone ever finds that, heterosexual or, or homosexual. And I think some people go into the gay scene just looking all the time for that perfect partner. And I think that's very destructive. Evidence that many gay men are as disillusioned as Kevin Lee can be seen in the long lists of contact adverts in gay magazines. Six, true friend 4045, who needs a one-man guy. Photo phone appreciation. Gay man. Many of these come from men who have become dissatisfied with cruising and are looking for a longer term relationship. For a lasting relationship. Photo phone. Another sign of this is the recent boom in gay dating agencies in London. Hi, this is 348-4127, the Gayway 24-hour brochure service. Thank you so much for calling us here at Gayway. I'm sorry I can't answer your call personally, but if you leave your name and address, I'll get our brochure in the post to you right away. We look forward to arranging your first gateway date. So 
Emma Reed and Mel LaRoche, a lesbian couple who run Gayway, think the oppressiveness of gay clubs explains part of the agency's success. Um, I think they're great to go to, um, uh, providing you, you kind of use them in the right way. If um, you go and kind of go there to have a, a great time, that's, that's super. But I mean, I think so many people today kind of go there after finishing work in this to you know, very straight environment and they kind of go there purely just to find someone for the night. And uh, I think that's wrong because um, the atmosphere is just, is just totally wrong. We are attracting the sort of person who really digs cruising but is bored with it, uh, is bored with just being a pork chop, as somebody said to us yesterday, in the meat market, uh, and wants something far more. That, we, that they feel that we can give them with the physical aspects that turn them on and the sort of relationship in a, in a more long-term sense, be that friendship or a relationship in longer terms, that they feel that Gayway can give them. Some gay men have always rejected casual sex and preferred to develop long-term relationships. Oh, that was funny, yeah. Counting up the heads, yeah. trying to work out how Saxon many... Lucas and Rodney Madden are a gay couple who've been living together for 20 years. <laughs> we met on a very wet night in the middle of Queensway, of all places. Uh, Saxon had uh, arranged to meet someone who hadn't turned up, and uh, I'd just had a meal and was crossing Bayswater uh, to Bayswater Station. And we happened to, to arrive there at the same time to shelter under the, the awning outside Bayswater. And uh, the rain pelted down and pelted down, and uh, eventually we got chatting, and um, that was it, really. <laughs> Our Can first you... meeting. We've been together 20 years uh, from 12th of May next. Uh, I don't know how we've managed to, to stay together quite that long, but uh, no, it's been a, well, it's a long time, let's face it. <laughs> We've had our ups and downs in that time, like any couple, I'm sure, but uh, managed to overcome them. Their relationship is very like an ordinary marriage. I think it's exactly the same as a, an ordinary heterosexual marriage. It's the only difference, of course, is there are no children at the end of it, which is the only sad thing. It has all the same problems, the same pressures, how to keep the mortgage going and pay the taxes. And like every marriage, you've got to compromise. Perhaps you've got to make a few more sacrifices than perhaps an ordinary heterosexual marriage. Um, I think one needs to be more disciplined, uh, perhaps consciously disciplined. But basically, it's exactly the same. As Saxon Lucas is a practicing Christian, he felt it important to have the support of the church. The local vicar was happy to give their relationship his blessing. Well, for some, I know it is very hard to understand that two men can live to, you know, together in a very warm relationship, but if they are sexually orientated, they can only make a relationship with a member of the same sex. I believe that we are justified in having a blessing on such a union. The blessing was not an actual marriage, but was a ceremony performed in the local church. First of all, we say that they have come in the presence of God and their friends, so they have witnesses to their special service, and they exchange vows in the same way that David and Jonathan did in days of old. And then I ask if they believe that they have been called by God to live together, and they say, I do. And after that, one of the questions is, will you swear to remain faithful to each other never allowing any other relationship to come before the one you are now to affirm. And they say, we will. And then they just exchange vows and promise to be faithful and to love each other and care for each other. They hold hands and they also exchange rings. Promises of sexual fidelity are, of course, an essential part of the ceremony. And they both feel that it's very important to their relationship. I think sexual fidelity is very important in our relationship, as it is in, in any relationship. Obviously, if, if one is going to sort of wander all over town, then it's going to cause problems. Well, let's try Biggest, against, hmm? up against the wall. Can you sort of prop it up against the back? Uh, 
They reject the idea that it's wrong to copy heterosexual relationships. If by affirming one's deep love for somebody and promising to live with them for the rest of one's life and living together in honesty and in love and emotion and sexual pleasure and all the things that are, make up a marriage is aping heterosexual uh, life, then certainly we are. But that is what life is about. And I think that anyone who can say that we shouldn't do that knows very little about life itself anyway, and certainly knows very little about love. Mm. Yeah. You know, and they'll disappear in candlelight. It's true. Which is the main thing. But relationships so like this are not the norm for gay men. Most find that maintaining long-term relationships is very difficult. Well, I think a plain blind. Fabian Moynihan is a Christian social worker who counsels gay couples. I think that gay people find it a bit more difficult than most people to maintain relationships. It's partly because the pressures on a gay couple to split up are a little more greater. And the support that one gets from the community, from the law, from the ordinary economics of a relationship, tend to be not as effective as within a marriage. If you are a married couple, um, the law keeps you together, social pressures keep you together, your family keeps you together, you've got all sorts of things like shared property and so on, which keep you going in through a rough time. You think, well, I better stick together because what's going to happen to the cat? Um, whereas a gay couple haven't got anything nearly like the same amount of support or just ordinary pressures of society to keep them going. Well, I think that sex ought to be seen not as something sacred or holy, or something that necessarily has some ulterior um, purpose in life, or ulterior purpose in moulding relationships, cementing relationships. I think it ought to be seen as one of the simple pleasures of life. And it ought to be put in its place, in a sense. It ought to be seen as um, one amongst many other possible pleasures that we can have in life, not necessarily the most important. I think casual sex need not imply something that's objectifying, something that's dehumanising. It can, on the contrary, be something that uh, involves a lot of caring, a lot of feeling. But because it doesn't last for 10, 20, 30 years, doesn't negate the importance of it. I think you can have a really caring um, encounter um, over a very short period, um, as long as two people are mutually involved in the experience. It needn't be something that has to last for the rest of one's life. I think um, two people can have, have pleasure with each other, uh, enjoy the, each other's company, and uh, get a, quite a lot out of that. And we needn't think that because it's short term, that somehow it's a failure. Is that still yes. Gay women's relationships are often different from those of gay men. One big difference, for example, is that cruising seems to play a much smaller role in lesbians' lives. I think that one reason why there's no, not a developed lesbian cruising scene in the same way that there is a male gay cruising scene is probably financial, that there's not as much money in it for the people who run these things because women haven't had as much money to spend as men have uh, and still don't. But I think another reason is probably connected with the very secrecy of the way that lesbians have lived their lives, tucked away, living quietly as far as possible, that that's the antithesis of a cruising scene, which in its very nature is a public thing, where you go and explicitly identify yourself as a lesbian. Lesbians are generally considered to form longer and more stable relationships than gay men. But this doesn't mean that they model their relationships on monogamy or heterosexual marriage. It's not a natural state for human beings, as a matter of fact, but I think for everyone it, it comes as a great shock when you realise that it's, it's not a natural state. I mean, you really do believe when you fall in love that you will stay in love with this person for the rest of your life, and it's a terrible shock to realise you won't. Uh, so I think for everyone it's only later in their lives that they come to think that perhaps monogamy is not the thing, or I don't know, perhaps I'm just speaking for myself, I'm not sure, but I think it's true of quite a lot of people. An alternative is for two people to develop a different kind of relationship. Marcelli Cameron and Sonia Rule have a more flexible, open arrangement in which each partner is allowed sexual freedom. 
it means that there is there is a kind of um, primary relationship between two people, but that they're, they're not um, necessarily sexually um, faithful. This is wrong. I mean, this is using concepts from monogamy, of course, but they, they don't. They are allowed, in terms of their contract, to sleep with other people, I suppose. Um, and indeed, but it's not just a sexual thing, I think. It's um, to do with the fact that it's a, an attempt to get away from the ownership pattern which um, people, these people would tend to see in a marriage relationship. They both accept that their relationship does have its tensions. I think sexual jealousy is one of the most difficult problems in a relationship of this kind. As I said earlier, one of the ways of approaching open relationships is that somehow you'll be able to get away from guilt and from jealousy and all these associated things. I think some people approach it as a kind of panacea and that all the um, ills of monogamy will be resolved by this wonderful step into liberation and I think that's just crap. Um, I mean, an open relationship is no easier than monogamy. It, in many cases, I think, is much more difficult and sexual jealousy is one of the main things. Some gay men live in open relationships too. Jack Babusho has been living with another man for 10 years. He pursues his own career as a writer, journalist and film critic. Jack Babusho's lover is Richard Dunn. He's a history lecturer and a health enthusiast and many of his interests are different from Jack's. They allow each other considerable sexual freedom. But like Marcelie and Sonia, found that it wasn't easy at first. At the beginning of our relationship, of course, uh, we considered that we couldn't have any outside relationships. That was 10 years ago. And of course, we've changed a great deal then. I think both of us were far more jealous at the beginning uh, than we are now. In fact, jealousy has declined enormously since then. But I think because of our uh, commitments to each other, naturally there is a residual uh, jealousy. But I think that in the long run, the, the decline will continue. I think as far as sexual freedom in a relationship is concerned, it's been very good for our relationship that we do allow for outside sexual commitments. Um, I don't think this means license, of course. Uh, but we allow relation, other relationships outside of our primary one to develop. We don't restrict each other in any way like that. We recognize our, our needs and we respect them. I think open relationships depend very much on trust. If a couple are happy and um, relaxed with each other, they are good friends, they share a lot, they have a lot in common, apart from their sexual relationship, they're happy that their friend has other friends in all sorts of ways has other relationships in all sorts of ways, partly because some of them just happen, the people you work with, the people that you share other interests with, your family, and also because uh, if you rely on the other person not to let you down, not to shatter the basic relationship that you have, then there's no real reason why a person shouldn't have a sexual relationship with somebody else. Despite the problems, open relationships can be successful. Cruising or exclusive relationships aren't the only alternatives for gay people, though as we've seen, many find these perfectly satisfactory. What this demonstrates, perhaps, is that no one single norm is necessary for gay people. Straight people have similar problems, and many are beginning to abandon the dominating idea of monogamy too. In the process, they may find gay people's experiences of value. I think that the pressures which also were seen to keep a non-gay relationship together, marriage vows, children, and so forth, are now being seen to as less uh, beneficial because very often the relationship is kept together when really it should have ended because the people have grown and they've grown in different directions and they've not grown at the same speed, they no longer love each other. It uh, hurts the relationship and it doesn't benefit the children. But I think gays have developed creative alternatives 
which are very exciting. And I think if um, non-gay people were more aware of what these were, yes, they, they could benefit from them. With both the, the, the crumbling of the idea of marriage and also the expectations of what men and women are going to be like, heterosexuals increasingly are having to face each other as equals, which homosexuals have been trying to do for a long, long time. And it's, it's my opinion that they, um, heterosexuals can actually learn a great deal from the way homosexuals live.